It was a crime that shook its victims to their very core, a robbery like no other taking place in a tiny rural town. The target was an aircraft filled with cash, but the bandits got it wrong. Get out of the plane! Get out of the plane! What goes through your mind when you're looking down the barrel of a gun like that? My kids. Was I ever going to see them again? A partner, family, just... It could be gone. A lonely, dusty airstrip. Outback New South Wales. Over to the fence now! The scene of one of Australia's most brazen robberies. It was well planned. The idea was well conceived. It was well coordinated. It was well executed. It was the morning of January 20, the year 2000. It was the day mother of five, Wendy Norton, was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was a double barrel and it was very, very close. I thought we were gone. If we didn't participate, it was, it was it. Yep. The pilot, who, 18 years later, wants to remain anonymous, found himself staring down the barrel of a shotgun, fearing for his life. Testing, testing. OK, got me there. These are his words from his police statement. Pretty sure it was a pump action. Uh, the pump action part was brown in colour and the rest of the colour was charcoal. When he pointed the gun at me, I was, I was really in fear for my life. I believe if I didn't cooperate, he'd use it on me. In police corridors, it's become known as the great plane robbery that wasn't. But if they would have gone another day, instead of getting a couple of thousand dollars, could easily have got several hundred thousand dollars. Let's go back to that fateful day. It began here at Bankstown Airport in Sydney Southwest. It was what was known as the bank run, effectively a delivery service to small and remote towns across New South Wales. Lima 6 PAB, full Barwarina via Cadom, received Bravo, request taxi and we're ready. Delivery to Delta Ground, the The PA 31 Navajo Chieftain was being piloted by a 21 year old. After taking off without incident, the aircraft followed the regular bank run route, which reached across the state's northwest. First stop, Mudgee, then Coonabarabran, Canambal, Walgett, and Brewarina. Yeah, well, Monday to Friday, I fly the bank run, and that day the aircraft was pretty full. Distributed throughout the aircraft were more than 100 parcels, next day delivery items, government documents. But this wasn't called the bank run for nothing. There were also, on occasion, very large sums of money. At each stop, the 10-seater plane was met by couriers to take delivery of the parcels. They knew the run, didn't they? They knew the run. How long had they been watching? Don't know. The regular Brewarina courier was planning to go on leave, and so she took her sister, Wendy Norton, along to learn the ropes. Middle of Navy. Wouldn't have expected it at all. It was, to this point, the regular run. Nothing seemed out of the norm. But taxiing towards the small terminal, the young pilot spotted a car come out of nowhere. The white Holden Commodore was speeding towards the front of the plane. The aircraft lurched to a stop. car pointed a double barrel shotgun at the pilot. The engines were still running. He ordered for them to be shut off. Get out of the plane! With his hands in the air, the terrified pilot was ordered out of the cockpit. At the same time, Wendy and her sister were confronted by a second gun-wielding bandit. Walk to the fence! But I looked over my right shoulder 
and there's a guy standing there with a gun. Neither woman had been able to see what was happening at the front of the plane. At first, Wendy thought it was a prank. Yeah, and I just turned and looked at my sister and she was just as white as a sheep. This was no joke. All three victims genuinely thought they were going to die. I kept my hands in the air the whole time. I mean, this guy with the shotgun was yelling at me. Keep walking! When he pointed the gun at me, I was, I was in fear for my life. I mean, when he pointed at me, I believed he was going to use it for me if I didn't cooperate. The trio was marched to a chain link fence just outside the terminal where they were handcuffed before the bandits returned to the plane. While one was rifling through the parcels on board, the other seemed to be trying to start the engines. I saw him in the uh, left hand seat, uh, hunching down, fiddling around. His hands were uh, down with the instrument, under the instrument panel. They went to a great extent. Um, from the um, stealing of the car um, and uh, the belief that we have that uh, they were going to actually steal the plane. Detective Senior Constable Chris Ford heads up Strike Force Leeburn. And mate, we're in the middle of nowhere. This is Barorina. Who would think that there'd be an organised armed robbery in Barorina? I know, I know. And, you know, the victims, they, they just were going about their normal business and, you know, that would have been frightening for them. Mm. Terrifying. Um, you know, country town. And as you said, who would have thought this would happen in a country town? The victims told police only one of the bandits spoke and all distinctly remember an accent. Oh, he spoke with some foreign accent. I, I just, I couldn't, I didn't understand what type of accent it was. Wendy Norton says the pair knew precisely what they were targeting. They knew exactly what everything was and they just had everything just down pat. It just seemed like nothing, there was no faults. There was just, they knew where to park. They knew where the parcels were and out. And there was something else that stood out for Wendy, their clothing. Everything was brand new, white sneakers, everything was just brand new. The gang had clearly, carefully planned this heist. Detectives suspect at least one of them had received pilot training. It's thought that they were going to steal the plane and land it on this lonely stretch of highway just south of Brewarrina. But they couldn't get the plane started because the pilot had used an emergency procedure to shut the engines down. I didn't want to uh, complete the full engine shutdown procedure because I didn't want to put my head down. I uh, kept my hands above my head the whole time. After failing to start the aircraft, the pair grabbed a number of parcels on board before bolting to their car. And as they sped off, they had the gun pointing out the window. The bandits drove the stolen Commodore to where they had planned to land the plane. And with only about $1,000 in their pockets, the gunmen set about destroying any evidence and any trace of their existence. One match, and up she went incinerating anything that could possibly lead to their identification. And that is where the trail runs cold. There must have been another getaway car and possibly more accomplices. The bandits simply vanishing into thin air. What was this? What was this? Well, this is depicting the, the makeshift runway, okay. which was about 40 kilometres outside of Varana. So they knocked down the signs? Knocked down the signs, um, coloured some rocks and made it look like uh, so they could signify a runway right. and simulate the uh, runway. Danny Doherty is the boss of the robbery squad. That's the stolen Commodore? That's that was... the stolen Commodore, okay. which was, was uh, found at this location. Found here, yeah, okay. Um, which was uh, 
obviously forensically tested. Yep. It was a lot of planning for little reward. The gang got away with just over a thousand dollars. They didn't even take the pilot's wallet. It seems they simply struck on the wrong day. Detectives have been told that if they would have hit that plane the next day, they would have got away with more than half a million dollars. But make no mistake, this case has not gone cold. And they could have easily got the, the, a major prize out of this, and they, they didn't get it. They could have got a plane and a large amount of money. In fact, strike force detectives have even taken the hunt overseas, with at least one of the crooks having a foreign accent. Look, we've investigated all those theories, and we'll continue to do that. Um, we do not discount any theory, um, and we'll never do that. Every, anything is possible. Robbery squad detectives have determined the white Commodore was stolen from Winston Hills in Sydney's northwest four months before the robbery. More evidence, if it was needed, of the extensive planning, but they got one crucial thing wrong. The wrong day. Yeah. Um, the wrong plane. Investigators say it's only a matter of time before the culprits are caught and when they are, they'll face charges of carrying out the Great Plain robbery that wasn't. This is a, a brazen and, and, and violent armed robbery. Mm. So very much like unsolved homicides, unsolved armed robberies are still uh, something we're committed to. I'm always confident that with the assistance of the public, we might be able to solve this matter. Someone has to know something, so now it's over to you. If you have any information that might assist police, call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. That's 1800 333 000.